How does a North Carolina woman, a former beauty queen who's later touched by a scandal that makes headlines throughout her, throughout the entire world, how does this woman become one of the main characters in a book about cloning pets? Well, we'll ask Pulitzer Prize winning reporter John Weston Dick, the author of Dog Inc., that question when he's our guest on North Carolina Book Watch next. Funding for North Carolina Book Watch is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV, and by the North Carolina Humanities Council. Welcome to North Carolina Book Watch. I'm B.G. Martin, and my guest is John Weston Dick. He is the author of Dog Inc., the uncanny inside story of cloning man's best friend. John Weston Dick, welcome. Thanks, D.G. Thanks for uh, coming back. You were you were born in Winston Salem, I think. I was. I just lived there for a year, and then my parents started bouncing around the country. Your dad but, was uh, a distinguished. Uh, journalist. journalist. Both my parents were journalists. And, and worked uh, at the time you were born, but working, were they working for different papers in uh, Winston? They were, were they were yeah, they were the journal, the journal and the Sentinel. Yeah. Uh, but they both, they made, they both went to school here at UNC and then uh, worked together there. Well, you, um, your dad's in the Hall of Fame? Yep. The Journalism Hall of Fame. I am too, though. You are. <laughs> I wasn't going <laughs> to, I wasn't going to leave that out. <laughs> okay. Um, making sure. Uh, Father-son combination. So journalism is a family business, and you did, like your dad, uh, uh, working in North Carolina, but mainly working outside North Carolina most recently and continuously, uh, continuing for the Baltimore Sun, but you're living in North Carolina. Now. Yeah, I, w I left the Baltimore Sun to write this book in 2008, um, and then spent a year, after the book was done, spent a year traveling around the country with my dog and ended up back here where my mom still lives. Well, there are two stories I want to talk to you about. One is the dog ink story mm -hmm. and all of the uh, complexities uh, that have to do with the science and the personal uh, stories that go along with people wanting a clone of their pet. And then also, I guess we're going to have to skip it, but one day I'd love to talk to you about your journey across, your sort of, uh, was it Steinbeck? Who, who, yeah, uh, John Steinbeck uh, did uh, the uh, travels, travels with Charlie. Charlie. You took your dog across. Followed it. his route, but then did a little extra after that, and maybe it'll be in a book in the future. Well, please. I hope so, so we can, but uh, I, there's too much about cloning to talk about, and I wonder if you would just tell us why, uh, you know, cloning sheep is, an, that's an old story and we're used mm -hmm. to it, it's no longer, um, why is, why, how did you get interested in cloning dogs and what makes that special? Well, cloning, you know, I've never had a big interest in cloning. I remember Dolly the sheep, and then in 2005, the first dog was actually cloned in South Korea, named Snuppy. And that was a fairly big news story at the time, nothing like Dolly had been. Um, but I was working at the Baltimore Sun and uh, writing a lot about pets and uh, doing a blog for them. And I put in a little mention about an anonymous woman who was having her pit bull cloned for $150,000. And uh, she ended up calling me and we had lots of long telephone conversations. I did a story for the paper. She was having her dog cloned for 150. That was the original price. It's not what she ended up paying. But, uh, uh, and, and that just sounds kind of ordinary to me uh, on hearing it now, but um, it, this would have been the first commercial clone, the first right. time that anybody paid to have their pet cloned successfully. She was the first true, the first true customer. And there were actually two companies that existed at that time offering to, to clone your dog. Why did it, why was the price so high? Because it, it was and still is a, a, a involved scientific and process that they have to kind of do over and over again before it works. It's not, you know, a one-shot deal and you have success. Why did she have to go to South Korea to get her dog cloned? Weren't there people in, aren't there people in the United States who are, who are cloning geniuses and successful cloners? Sure there are, but they, but, uh, she originally signed up with an American company. At the time, it was called Genetic Savings and Clone, and they were, this was before cloning dog 
was achieved, but they were banking the cells of, of your dog uh, for the day when the day came that cloning was possible. She signed up with them. They were connected to research going on at Texas A&M University, which was the, the first attempt to clone a dog. Uh, and that was funded privately by a, a John Sperling, the guy who's the founder of the University of Phoenix, uh, with the idea of getting, getting his dog cloned, but also with the idea that it could be like a big profitable business down the road. So, so she signed up with them. Uh, they tried to clone a dog at Texas A&M for two or three years and, and never succeeded. They did manage the first cloning of cat, um, but after they gave up at Texas A&M, uh, she switched over to, to the Korean company. I guess the point that you made in your book that startled me was that Texas A&M uh, was a successful cloner of animals. I mean, they could clone other yeah, animals, they had, they had but they couldn't lots. clone dogs. Yeah, dogs were the, the most difficult species so far to clone uh, just because they only go into, into heat or estrus like once or twice a year, and because they're, they're the egg cells, which they use for cloning, uh, donor, anonymous donor egg cells. Um, with dogs, they're, op they're opaque. You can't really see through them as, as you can with other species. And so the, you know, the manipulation, the micro manipulation that's involved is, was more difficult. You don't, um, or you, you, you're careful to say that this is not a book of science, but you have to talk about some of the science. And the, and the part of the science that you just described uh, is essential in the sense that the way you clone an animal, or the way we, we clone an animal now, is to get an egg from just any old right. uh, 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 um, female of the species and somehow or another invade the egg and put a new genetic core. Yeah. From they pretty much empty out the, the cell. They just put a pipette in there and like vacuum it and remove all the if contents. If it were big, if the cell, if it were as big <laughs> as this table, it'd be easy to understand that there's genetic material in here and you just vacuum it out and you put in the new... Right, put in the, the and donor, then, the dog to be cloned. You and put then put in the egg back in another dog. Yeah, well, for, dog. After, before that, it it gets zapped with electricity, which is what? the part that's weird to a lot of people. It's but weird to me. <laughs> now, what, 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 why that, would you... So you got the... Just pretend. You got this big egg, you got the new genetic material in it, and then you got to shock it. Yeah, which causes them to, to merge and, and for the cell to, to, to begin dividing. To settle it in. Yeah. Now, that didn't work all the time. Uh, it, well, they don't, they, it starts dividing usually, and they and they implant it uh, in like surrogate dogs. There are yet more dogs that are involved. Um, for the first dog clone, they ended up they planted implanted more than a thousand embryos into hundreds of dogs. Uh, worked two times. It's become more efficient since then. Now but it's you still say worked lots. at Texas A and M or in Korea or this was in South Korea. In South, so never successful in not with Texas A and M. Not with dogs. They with achieved dog. all sorts of other animals: goats, pigs, cats bulls, um, but they, they, they uh, dropped the, the dog project, the primarily because of the cat project. <laughs> well, all right, well, <laughs> let's take a little side trip. Okay, so Can't, not long, because I want to get back to the main uh, story. But, uh, what, what, what they, they, their mission was to clone a dog, but uh, along the way they cloned a lot of other things, including a cat, uh, which was also all funded by the same guy, and, and the, they thought that cats could also be, cat cloning could also be lucrative business. Um, but the first cat that was cloned came out looking different than its donor. It, had, it was not the same coloring, uh, and so the scientists involved had no problem with that because they said it's still a genetic, still a genetic duplicate. duplicate. Uh, the, the business side of it had big problems with that, and, and you know, to the point of wondering if they were sabotaged by the scientists, because the scientists by then were had qualms about the whole business science merger. Well, the, this is so interesting because the good news was, as far as cat owners, is that cats are more clonable than dogs. Mm -hmm. that you, that, that's that's a that's a practical. We can do that. Yeah. The bad news is that your cloned cat may not look like. It, it would be a genetic duplicate, but it might not look exactly right. like uh, the cat that you wanted a replacement for, and that's yeah. really bad news. Yeah. Which proved true for a lot of the dogs too, but, but they they do it enough times that they ensure you know they do get one that that's a good match, which leads right. to a lot of surplus clones that, that need a home. Well, that's a, a, a quite another story too. Yeah. But I want to get back to the main story. So you've got this woman who's in touch with you, and you've explained now why she's focusing on South Korea as a place to get her dog clone, 
because can't do it in America. Yeah. Nobody will do it. it was in, the, in fact, States. the Texas A&M scientists suggested to her. Well, who you know, does it? In, is there a, a one person in Korea that you go to, or where do you uh, go it's, in Korea? Well, it's a company now. It, it was Seoul National University that cloned the first dog, uh, and then sort of similar to what happened at Texas A&M, there was sort of a, a close relationship between the school and, and the business that formed up called RNL Bio, and it's the actual company that that was and still is taking orders to to clone dogs. Well, uh, tell us more about the story that th of this woman who told you she was going to have her dogs cloned. Okay. Well, uh, pr probably for starters, uh, should talk a little bit about the about the bond, which is a big factor in all these. The uh, bond. The bond between the the person and the dog they're having cloned. Um, for her, uh, she had she lived in, in Avery County, uh, sort of a farmhouse near her parents. Um, she had lots of animals. She was more into animals than, than people, which isn't all that rare. Um, she had, she found well, a... Well, now you see, now you love, you've got a dog that you love too. So yes, you, can, you can identify yeah, with uh, can, this kind of, uh, um, I can maybe really over the, what do you call it, over the... Uh, over the top, over Over the top over, love I of, <laughs> and I mean, but I mean, that's, a, it's an American, yeah. we do love our pets. I don't, I don't know who has the right to say what represents the top and what's yeah, over it. Yeah. But, but with her, uh, she found a, she was driving along the road, saw a pit bull abandoned on the side of the road and took it in, It's name, named it Booger. Um, she had it, she had other animals at the time, including uh, dogs, and including a, a dog that she had gotten for protection, a big mastiff that was a guard dog named Tough Guy. Um, one day, Tough Guy attacked her uh, very seriously and like, almost tore off her, one of her arms, uh, and it was Booger though like a, a third of the size of Tough Guy, who kind of rescued her, you know, came out, jumped on Tough Guy and, and fought him off as much as he could and gave her time to, to get in the car and go down to her father's house. She ended up being transported to a hospital in Winston-Salem and had lots, lots of reconstructive surgeries and it was a, a long process that took her a long time to, to recover from. She had a long rehabilitation period and during that time, Booger, the pit bull, sort of became her unofficial service dog and helped her with all sorts of tasks around the house and getting in and out of the tub and doing laundry. So and she loves she, animals, but yeah. she really yeah, she loves this dog. Yeah, she can depend on them. So what happened? Uh, eventually Booger died after she had she had moved to, to California. Um, Booger died and she preserved some of his tissue and made a uh, connection with uh, the American company that She's was working She's thinking about uh, cloning from the very moment of, yeah. uh, of his of his death. Well, even before that, when because she still loved the dog that attacked her too, tough guy, and she uh, actually told me anyway that she called uh, Ian Wilmot, the guy who cloned Dolly the sheep, to to ask about getting tough guy cloned, even though he he maimed her. Um, she ended up. He told her, you know, they're not they're not to the point of of dogs yet. Back when this happened, um, she ended up having him him stuffed or, or mounted by a taxidermist and instead which a lot of people also do. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, uh, so she, um, where does she go when she saves the tissue? What she uh, saves the tissue, it's like it's kept and re refrigerated. Is the, was the idea then, we're not ready to clone yet, but uh, good no. idea, but we know we'll be there someday, so you save the tissue and someday we'll be able to. Right, right. And then when she, so the, the tissue of Booger was, was saved in, here in the United States, but when she signed up with the, the Korean company for it to clone Booger, um, they, they got that, sti that tissue, uh, but they also, she also had Booger's whole body refrigerated, so they got more tissue from that. And, and, and so the both. tissue, if, this is interesting, I mean, if, so if your tissue, either of humans or animals, is refrigerated, it, it will indefinitely preserve the cell structure necessary for cloning. Yeah. And, and the companies, uh, when they first started out, advised, you know, put the dog in the, in the freezer, you know, if it, if it dies. Freezer, uh, not refrigerator, but freezer. Freezer, I think, is preferable. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. So she did that. And, she did. And, and then when the, when the American company shut down and she signed up with the, the South Korean company, uh, they came over, got the tissue samples, went back and, and started working on producing a clone of Booger. Um, Less than a year later, she got a, a call uh, from them telling her that there were you know, three, three boogers that were soon to be born, and they made arrangements for her to go over and, and see the, 
see them as puppies. She couldn't pick them up then. Well, now you said it was going to cost her, as you first heard about this, that $150,000. Right. She, she's not a wealthy woman. Uh, no. Where, 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 how, did she just lie when she said she'd be able to pay for it, or what, what was the deal? Uh, she didn't have the money, that's for sure. She gets like 500 a month of Social Security, so, it, uh, so she didn't have it. She hoped to, to get it somehow, including the possibility of, you know, doing her own book, movie, on, on cloning her dog. Uh, and, uh, so she's aspiring to be a celebrity with uh, this. Well, movie. as we'll find out, she has, she has been a celebrity in, the, in, in, the, in her past, uh, and she's also a writer. She's very intelligent. Well, I'm a very determined woman. You were following her, though, on the cloning story of her dog, and you're interested in that. Yeah. And I don't want to, we don't want to uh, string people along too much, but the, the other story did develop. When did you be sense that there might be another story about her other than the cloning? Well, at the, at the very beginning, we, you know, we, we talked over the course of the year on the phone, you know, for more than 100 hours. And, th and at the very beginning, she mentioned that she had a scandal in her past that she didn't want to talk about. Um, she t and told me a few things that, that I was able to get a, a pretty good hunch what that scandal was just through Googling her name, even though she was using a different first name by then. She was using the name yeah. Bernan McKinney. She, um, this is Bernan McKinney, who's you're in touch with because you're writing in, 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 um, in, 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 in your blog and in mm -hmm. newspaper articles about the pets and the pl cloning phenomena. Yeah. Yeah. She's got this story, I mean, so you begin to suspect that she was uh, involved in another Yeah, what I did some Googling, and, and, and she told me that she was like a, a, a beauty queen and told me that the, the Mormon religion was involved. Uh, and I found, went back and found stories about a Joyce McKinney who in 1977 um, had, was arrested in, in London. She had uh, followed her, her she was met a guy while going to school at Brigham Young in Utah, f falling in love with him. Uh, his, he was sent to London to, be, to do Mormon missionary work. She managed to track him down, and with an accomplice, uh, or at least this is what she was accused of, she abducted him or kidnapped him, took him to a, a cottage out in the country, and uh, had her way with him against his will. Were there handcuffs, something about handcuffs? There were handcuffs involved, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. what, 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 so, so that's uh, she ended up unusual, getting, but what, what happened after that? She got charged, uh, was in jail for, for a while, uh, eventually released pending the, the trial that was to take place on, on kidnapping charge. She was never actually charged with, with rape, even though some papers reported that. Uh, before the trial, though, she and her accomplice uh, got fake passports, uh, in the names of, of deceased people. Uh, got some disguises and went to the airport, pretended they were part of a deaf mime troop that was flying out of the country and just sort of followed them, came back to America. She went back to North Carolina and, and sort of tried to, to lay low because she became, because of the sensationalist behavior of the doll. It's all, a great, I mean, this is a huge tabloid a story. story. Yeah, and, and so she was became a celebrity over there. Uh, some people have seen a film about this. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, the Errol Morris uh, documentary Tabloid is, is mostly about, about that. So it, as you worked this story that you wanted to work on, the um, cloning story, the... It kind the, of bubbled up, and, and, and uh, I, eventually I, I, I knew, and, and, the, and the Korean company as well, they Googled themselves, and, and they found out, you know, this was in her past. Was this going to be a positive for the Korean company? It was, what she was they, supposed to be they, a positive because she, I mean, they had, the first cloning customers were sort of hand-picked because of their heartwarming stories and that would sort of, you know, maybe build support or, or diminish. So these were, although they were costly uh, to the customer, they also were, quote, loss leaders in the sense that they were designed to be promotional, like the first car on yeah. the road. Uh, we, we want a lot of attention. Right. And right. that's how she, she, originally she was supposed to pay 150000 They reduced it by a hundred thousand in exchange for her agreeing to do publicity about it. Um, and it was in doing that publicity and appearing, you know, on BBC and Today Show that uh, she was recognized from back in 1977 and the whole scandal resurfaced again. And ha would, did that work out to be a positive for her, for the company, for... The no, company? I think that was pretty much a negative all the way around. 
Uh, she, she didn't like it. She didn't like the stories to be mixed because she saw the cloning story as, as you know, heartwarming story and the, and the tabloid scandal story as, you know, filth that was behind her and in her past. And so she, she didn't like them being mixed. The company, initially, the leaders of the company said, you know, well, that, that scandal's not really relevant to her cloning her dog. But when it all boiled up like it did, I think they kind of regretted it. And then when she went to actually pick up the dogs a few months later, you know, there was none of the, none of the fanfare of the first visit. Uh, this, you know, get your dogs and pay us and, and leave. Well, well, there, there's an interesting uh, sidebar to the story um, in the sense that it was something you never th think about. But uh, she got more than she bargained for. She got not just one clone, but she got right. She ended up five. getting five because there were three were born from one of the surrogates, and and two more were, were came at the, about the same time. So she got five and wanted all five and took all five. First of all, um, I think it's reasonable for those of us who are uneducated to expect that a genetic a duplicate of our pet will be uh, the same and if you had five genetic duplicates they would all be the same but what what's the story uh, what's they the story didn't turn out to all be it, either you know physically they weren't exactly the same burger was a, a, a black dog with a white some white markings uh, the clones a couple of them had the same exact markings uh, like three of them had different white spots in different places. Uh, some of them had health issues uh, when she got them home. Uh, one had what's called an anal prolapse. One was having seizures, kind of like described as biting at flies that, that weren't there. Um, there were a lot more problems when she got them back home, both with, with the dogs and, and with her own personal life. Um, so well, what, what, um, she loved this original dog yeah. so much. And the... Uh, did, did it was there any pro or was did she get or is any prospect of her getting this same dog or something very similar to it back she th and well, she went through a lot of periods where she was complaining about the dogs and saying they didn't look the same and even questioning whether they were truly clones all for she got verified afterwards um, but yeah I'm sure some of them are you know may live up to her expectations I mean that's that's the part of it of dog cloning that, that that bothers me and i don't know if it's in addition to all the, the animal welfare concerns and the, the the amount of dogs it takes to do it the invasive procedures the the surplus clones that nobody knows what to do with um it's on top of all that it and, and it's I, I don't think this is i don't know if this is would be described as a moral objection or not you know, some people say it's it's playing god to do it and God wouldn't be happy with it. To me, it's more, and the thing that intrigued me about the book, on top of it being the first time we were cloning for love, was that what it said about humans. And, and to me, it sort of says that humans, these humans anyway, and, and more so, uh, are a bit presu presumptuous and, and uh, sort of feel entitled to, to getting a living creature that died getting an exact copy back to me that's that's just sort of uh, they like they, they deserve that despite nature despite the the boundaries of nature you know I, I want my dog back and and that sort of strikes me as sort of selfish uh, it also I think leads to it's I'm not sure it's respectful of the uh, the original dog mm -hmm. to say you know I can just shake some test tubes and zap it and get a copy of you and in, and it creates really high expectations for the the clone that to live up to I would think well the um, it, it's easy to understand both sides because those of us who had a pet and you, mm -hmm. you got a pet that you love it, it is hard to part with them uh, commercially you think that well maybe gosh if you have a Kentucky Derby winner um, and you can get hold of that tissue and clone that horse then maybe that you know yeah. maybe that's worth uh, yeah. and the greyhound a racing dog was among among those cloned as well so well how do you feel uh, about the story and the Joyce McKinney connection did did she take over the story and take it away from you in terms of what you wanted to do about the general story or did that work out to be uh, something that enriched the story by bringing a character that we can all uh, sort of that, uh, sort of know a little bit and maybe identify with. How, how did it work for you? It 
just made things even more interesting than they already <laughs> were. Uh, I mean, she's fascinating, whatever else you might say about her. And, and it, it, she's not the only eccentric, you know, out there kind of character in the book. It's kind of loaded with. Uh, it is loaded people. with eccentric characters um, who, like a lot of normal people, uh, love their pets and are willing to go to the mat for them, for their health. Uh, preserve their life, to lengthen their life. I mean, we do crazy things yep. about dogs. All in all, though, uh, in one sense, it is a story of man's great love for pets and particularly for dogs. And so in that sense, it's, a, it's another wonderful story of man and dog, yeah. and we thank you for it. Uh, thank you. We thank John Weston Dick for this book, Dog Inc., the uncanny inside story of cloning man's best friend, and we thank him particularly for sharing a lot of that story with us today. Thanks to you for uh, visiting with us. Uh, I promise you, if you'll come back same time next week, I'll be here to um, visit with another one of North Carolina's great writers. Hope to see you then. Funding for North Carolina Book Watch is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV, and by the North Carolina Humanities Council.